Welcome back to 3C Media's High School Football Recap and Reaction. It is week four of the Indiana High School Football season. A lot of fantastic games on tap. A lot of interesting moments so far. A lot of fantastic moments so far. Uh, for a while there, uh, Ben Davis was hanging with IMG. Uh, IMG has since pulled away in that regard. Uh, we got a big battle between Noblesville and Westfield going on right now. That's got about eight minutes to go in quarter number four. Um, so that's the game we're watching right now. Uh, not super happy about having to pay to watch this game. Um, you, you know, I don't want to sound salty, but it's kind of annoying. Uh, but, you know, honestly, it's worth it because I want to bring the content to you guys and uh, in any way we can. If that means shelling out a couple of bucks, I'll do it for you guys because we love you. Um, <laughs> we also saw um, uh, Josh Ringer. Uh, score his 69th touchdown to get him uh, the all-time uh, record for touchdowns for East Central. So that was really cool. Um, so yeah, a lot of great games going on around the state of Indiana tonight. Is uh, It's kind of the next two weeks mark kind of the halfway point of the season. Um, we're starting to find out more and more what these teams are made of. As it's a big run for Noblesville. Big run up the middle of the field. He breaks free and he's gone. Touchdown, Noblesville. And they are an extra point away from tying this game. It was a plunge right up the middle. He broke free. Broke through the middle of the field. Got some blockers ahead of him. And he was gone. We see if they show a replay. I don't know if they will, but man, that was a heck of a run. Extra point is up and good. So now that Oblazil Millers and Westfield Rocks are tied. At 21, 7.17 to go in the fourth quarter. Let me see if I can get a, a name on that. Um, man, that was, that, was impressive. that was an impressive run. Um, let's see if I can search good old Noblesville Miller football here. See if we can get some. No. Nope. Last post from Noblesville Miller football is about the game tonight. But man, that was a heck of a run. I think I want to say it was number five for Noblesville. I I can't recall, but um, they had just gotten a first down on. They had just converted a fourth down. And then ran just kind of another little short run, a uh, design, uh, uh, what looked to be a short running play, but bro, you know, basically Noblesville part of the seas got the running back through, and he's gone for about a, you know, 50, 60 yard touchdown run. Looking at some other scores from around the top 25 in the state of Indiana, you got Center Grove. The last update we have on this, they're trailing Archbishop Archbishop Moeller right now, 21 to 13. Uh, Plainfield, number 23 in the state, they lead Perry Meridian, 21 to 14. Um, we've got a tie between number 16 Franklin Central and Zionsville. They're tied at 10. Number uh, 13 Carroll leads Fort Wayne Bishop Dwanger 20 to 6. Uh, Indianapolis Lutheran, the 11th ranked team, all over Lapel 31 to 7. Uh, number 24 Maryville up three to nothing on Portage. Um, Hamilton Southeastern, the sixth ranked team, leads uh, number eight. Bishop T 
fish up, fish up, Fishers, Tigers, 21 to 14. East Central, they've already wrapped up their win. They're the fourth team in the state. They win 55 to nothing over Franklin County. Um, I know the Bishop Chittard and Cathedral game has been suspended because of an issue with the stadium lights. I believe uh, Cathedral is up 21 to 14, if I'm not mistaken. Number two, Brownsburg leads Avon 39 to nothing. Uh, number three, Ben Davis trails IMG Academy 27 to seven. Uh, number 12, Fort, uh, Lawrence North leads North Central 35 to seven. Number 25, Bloomington uh, and South trails Bloomington North 14 to seven. Number 14, Carmel trails Trinity 28 to seven. And number 17, Penn leads Hammond Morton 35 to nothing. Second down and a long 20. I mean, I can't get any more long on a 12 for trying to get 20 yards here. It's going to be a short run up the middle. Not a whole lot going here. And it's going to be, no, sorry, that was first and 20. So it's going to be second and about 19 or so. Where is a good place to watch these games? I go to IHSA Champions Network. Uh, the problem with some of them, like the the what I had to do tonight, um, is sometimes you have to pay for them, which is a little annoying. Um, but um, other than that, yeah, IHSA Champions Network is where I go. Um, um, and depending on what team you want to watch, they also may have... Uh, um, they also may uh, just have like a link to like the actual like like team run broadcast. Uh, also, score for the Raiders and Mavs. Um, so I <laughs> I know a lot more about high school football, Indiana high school football, than I did a couple of years ago when we first started covering high school football. I, however, do not know what teams you were talking about just by their mascot. Um, I'm going to need, I'm going to need school names and then I can try to look up that score for you. <laughs> if, so if you say Raiders and Mavs, I have no idea what you're, who you're talking about. Uh, if you were to say Carmel and Trinity, I could tell you, or, uh, Penn and Ham, Ham and Morton. Um, but yeah, just by the, by the team names, I, I'm not going to know, uh, right off the bat who you're talking about. It's a fourth and 15 for the Rocks. They're going to punt it away. And honestly, I'm surprised this Westfield game and Noblesville game is as close as it is, especially after how Noblesville got walloped um, a week ago um, against the um, uh, against Fishers. It's a great punt. Goes all the way back to the wow, great roll on the punt, all the way down to the Noblesville three. That was a heck of a punt. They were on their own 31, Westfield was. They punt it, and it goes all the way down to the Noblesville 3. So a long field for the Millers uh, to try to to get something going and maybe take the lead. Sorry, Harrison Raiders and McCutcheon. Yeah, I can look that up. Yeah, no, no problem. I'm just saying I, I I don't know right off that. I'm not I'm not that good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that guy. <laughs> you're not that guy, pal. Believe me, you're not that guy. Uh, let's see, Harrison's, is Harrison, Harrison's 5A, right? Yeah, I think they're 5A. Or I guess I can just... Um, all right. So, pretty much the entire length of the field for Noblesville on this drive with 6.07 to play here in quarter number four. We'll see how this plays out. Now, the way this can kind of backfire on Westfield is the longer this drive goes as the second down run is really short, although Westfield's saying they've got it on a fumble, but no, it's going to be ruled down. I was going to say, if this ends up being a long touchdown drive for Noblesville, that can actually kind of backfire on that great punt that they had. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
All right, so what I have uh, from Max Preps is uh, no score between Harrison and McCutcheon. I'll, I'll see if I can double-check that and see if that's accurate because sometimes Max Preps doesn't have an accurate score. As on third down, it's going to be a quarterback keeper. No dice for the Noblesville uh, quarterback, and so the defense for Westfield holds, and they'll get the football back. We'll see if we can't find a uh, let's see if there's an actual update here. Punt is away for Noblesville. And it looks like that punt did not go super far. <laughs> that is not good news uh, for Noblesville's. It'll go out of bounds at around the Noblesville 30-yard line, which means that it's going to be, no, it's going to be at the, that punt went out of bounds at the Noblesville 21-yard line. So an extremely short field for Westfield, who is going to try to take the lead here. Here's the snap, and it's a handoff. It's going to be a short little run here, about two yards, as the clock dips below four minutes here between Westfield and Noblesville. Second down and eight is what it's going to be, with 3.39 to play in the fourth. centered up here snap handoff again and it'll be another couple of yards on their on the carry there so third down and five westfield from the noblesville 16 yard line it's going to be a rollout. It's going to be a pass. It's going to be a first down for Westfield at, down to the Noblesville 5, but I believe – is there a flag on the play? No, there is not. Okay, I thought there might be. It looked like something got thrown on the field, but that might just be something that, like, fluttered in front of the camera there. So first down for Westfield. From the Noblesville, Noblesville 5. Snap, here's the handoff, and Westfield is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Some good defense by Noblesville. Second down and goal from the five. 2.26 to go. Here's the snap. It's going to be just a little screen pass, and it's going to be a touchdown for Westfield. They take the lead. Nobody around them. It's a score for the Rocks with 2.22 to play in the fourth. And Westfield has a 27-21 lead. That was a great play. Just a throw over, 
just chucks it over to his wide receiver over on the left sideline, and he just is able to walk into the end zone. Extra point is up and good. So with 2.22 to play here in quarter number four, it is 28-21 Westfield. Of course, the Rocks trying to stay unbeaten. They have been pretty awesome all season. I mean, you, you look at the road Noblesville has had, or not Noblesville, you see the road that Westfield has, has had so far. They have a pretty good win over uh, New Pal uh, in week one. They have the incredible overtime win over Lawrence Central in week two. They have the comeback win over Zionsville in week three. And then playing against Noblesville. Now, granted, I, I think Noblesville, it was going to be interesting to see how they approach this game because Noblesville has that decisive win over Mount Vernon at Lucas Oil Stadium to start the season. But they get their bell rung a little bit uh, last week against uh, Fishers. So you wondered how they would fare in this game. And so far, uh, they've hung right with Westfield, who, like I said, I think is is one of the best teams uh, in 6A right now. So here's the kickoff back to Noblesville. Who's gonna get, the Millers are only going to get to about the 18-yard line. So it'll be an 82-yard field for Noblesville to try to tie this game with 2.16 to play. Now, from what we've seen from the Noblesville offense since we went live is a lot of running, uh, which was okay when there was 6.07 to go in the game and, and they were backed up on their own goal line because you thought, okay, well, if they can get a couple of good runs, I mean, you know, it's going to eat up a lot of clock. They can just drive down and, and score. Uh, but now they got to play with a little bit more urgency, so we'll see what they can do here with their time. Here's the snap. Quarterback looks, looks, rolls out, throws, and it's going to be incomplete. Th just throws that one away. I forgot to tweet out that I was live. That That's a rookie mistake by me. <laughs> Here's the snap. Quarterback rolls out to his right. That one's incomplete, but we are going to get a roughing the passer call on Westfield as the quarterback for Noblesville was just absolutely mauled after he threw the pass there. It looked like the hands for the Westfield defender was right in the face mask of the Noblesville quarterback, which you just cannot do. And So that should get the Millers a fresh set of downs. And that will give the Millers a little bit of new life here. So from the 34-yard line, here's a quick little pass over the middle. It's a good pass there up to about the first down marker. And that's what they're going to need to do. Those short intermediate passes is what they're going to need to try to put themselves in the best position they can to win this game. Here's the snap. It's a deep throw, incomplete. Threw it into double coverage, but the receiver was there, nearly made the catch, but it'll be third down and one.
So third down and one. Here's the snap. It's going to just be a quarterback keeper. He's got the first down across to the Noblesville 48-yard line, but a flag is down. We'll see what the call is. There we go. I tweeted it out. I feel better about myself. Penalty was on Westfield. So that will move Noblesville up to the 38 of Westfield with thirty a well, minute 31 to play here in quarter number four. Here's the snap. We might get a false start here. It's a throw down to about the 20. It's incomplete. It looked like a guy for Noblesville jumped. Um, but I don't believe that call will be made. So a couple of big, costly penalties from Westfield. Although I guess, theoretically, on the last one, Noblesville had the first down. Um, so it's just a matter of just tacking on yards to the end of the run. Um, but that roughing the passer call was huge. That gives Noblesville new life. Second down and 10, a minute 26 to play here in the game. Here's the snap. The, bo the ball just one hops and balls free on the ground. Westfield's got it. After a couple of costly mistakes from the Westfield defense, they come up big there. It wasn't a clean snap. Noblesville struggled to hang on. The quarterback drops it. Can't corral it. And Westfield lands on the ball, and it looks like they're in the driver's seat to now win this game. How's Mount Vernon and New Pal looking? Let me check. Let's see what happened in that game. That is tough, tough, tough for Noblesville because it looked like they – might have a shot to drive it down after the first couple of plays of their possession. I was like, I don't know how this is going to work out for them. And lo and behold, they got down to the Westfield 38. But now Westfield will take over at the 50. And we're just going to see the Rocks kneel this one out. And improve to 4-0 on the season. Let's see. Mount Vernon and New Pal. All right. So we've got a real defensive struggle between the New Pal Dragons and the Mount Vernon Marauders. In the fourth quarter, it is 56 to 39 New Pal. So if you love defense, that's the game for you. <laughs> It was 21 to 3 New Pal after the first quarter. 28 to 17 New Pal after at the half, a combined 43 points in the third quarter between those two teams. Mount Vernon won the third quarter 22 to 21, and the New Pal has added a touchdown in the fourth. That's pretty incredible. Westfield takes a knee. Noblesville has no more timeouts. So we should just see one more kneel down. And Westfield will secure the win. Here's a snap, last kneel, 35 seconds to go, and that should pretty much do it. So Westfield, the 7th ranked team in the AP poll and coaches poll in 6A, they improved to 4-0 on the season.
Their best start since 2019 when they also started 4-0. They will play Hamilton Southeastern next week. Circle that game on your calendars because that one is going to be a great one. The next two weeks, really, are going to be big games for Westfield. They play at Hamilton Southeastern. They're the fourth-ranked team, so it'll be – I imagine Westfield might move up. I don't know if they'll move up or not, but even if they don't, it'll be number four versus number seven when they play Hamilton Southeastern, and then they will be number two versus number seven when they take on Brownsburg. That's going to be pretty incredible. Schedule does not get any easier for them, but they are making their case right now um, as being one of the best teams in 6A. I mean, we talked about it in our season preview. Um, what is it going to take um, for, like, who, who are the realistic teams who can take on Center Grove in 6A? And look, I don't know who those teams are, um, but right now Brownsburg has been really impressive. Uh, ben Davis, you know, has done some big things. I mean, heck, they beat the team that um, pretty. They beat the team Center Grove's playing tonight pretty soundly, and Center Grove Center Grove was losing the last time I saw. Got Hamilton Southeastern, who, you know, they knock off Carroll the first week of the season. Cathedral strong as ever. So Center Grove, obviously the front runners, but there are some teams that are making themselves known and, and doing some great things, and Westfield is one of those teams. Appreciate all you guys hanging out tonight. Appreciate the likes. Appreciate the love. Hope you guys are enjoying yet another week of Indiana High School football. Um, it has been another awesome night. We're going to find a new game now that Noblesville and Westfield has concluded. We'll see what other games we can find here. And we'll do that. By giving you some other scores from around the state. Linton versus Sullivan. Linton won. I I, I think I would have predicted uh, Linton to win in that game. Uh, they had a fantastic game with uh, Monrovia last week. Just came on the wrong side of that ending their uh, you know, long regular season winning streak. But uh, I think Linton's going to have a strong year. Um, I think they're, you know, they were my... Uh, were they my pick to win 2A or were they my dark horse? I can't remember, uh, but I know I was pretty high on them at the beginning of the season, and I think they can do some some pretty good things. Let's see. What other games are out there that we can watch? Let's see if Eastern Hancock and Heritage Christian is any good right now. We're having a lot of foul trouble uh, this year. Yeah, that's that's never good. You never want to be racked with penalties. That is for sure. Eastern Hancock's broadcast showing a lot of stuff about old teams that they've had. They have like a whole whole presentation. Well done, well made. Ooh, Eastern Hancock and Heritage Christians close with four twelve to go. Okay. Let's lock in on this one. Eastern Hancock and Heritage Christian. Uh, Heritage Christian leads 24-20 to 20 
with 4.11 to go in the fourth, but it's a third down and five for Eastern Hancock. Let's see if they can convert here. Here's the snap. Easter Hancock is going to throw downfield. It's incomplete. The Royals want a flag. They're not going to get it. And that will mean a punt for the Royals. And we'll see if they can get the ball back. That, I believe, is 2A. So let's see if we can... I don't know if either of these two teams are ranked. If I'm being completely honest. I want to say they are. They have been in years past. As the punt is away. And Heritage Christian will get the ball at the Eastern Hancock 49. Yeah, so this is number 13 versus number 18 in uh, in 2A. Eastern Hancock, number 18, and Heritage Christian, number 13. Eastern Hancock with the two-tone helmets. That's pretty interesting. So the Eagles with the football now, and there's the handoff. Eastern Hancock has got great defense there as they stop the runner behind the line of scrimmage. So that's going to make it second down and 11 from the 50. And that's big. I mean, if they can get a stop here, I mean, that's going to put them in a good position to hopefully get a get the ball back and have another shot at this game. Here's the snap. Another pitch back to the running back. He's got a lot of room. He's going to charge forward. A great run. Breaks free. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Eagles. No, sorry. He's going to be taken down at the 10. It looked like number five for Heritage Christian was going to break that one for a touchdown. He kind of bobbled the initial pitch back to him, but he got a great uh, gap by his offensive lineman. Nearly gets tackled at about the first down marker, but once he got past uh, that a uh, line of tacklers, he was able to take that for another about 20, 30 yards down to the 10. A fantastic run for Heritage Christian, and that puts him in position to potentially score and, and put the dagger into the Eastern Hancock Royals. Here's the snap. Handoff again to the running back. This time not able to have as good a success as he did before. As he's taken down at about the line of scrimmage. As now the clock ticks down to 2.07 to play here in the fourth quarter. Here's the snap. Quarterback's going to keep this one. And he's going to be taken down at about the 13-yard line. So a couple of negative plays pushes Heritage Christian backwards. There's about 90 seconds to play in this game.
And this is where you wonder, on 3rd and 11, what the play call will be when you are up by 4. You're on the goal line, essentially. I mean, you're in the red zone. Um, And the question is, what do you do? Because if you do a running play, Eastern Hancock has one timeout. So they'll be able to stop the clock. I mean, you got to basically take a shot at the end zone, I would imagine, here. Um, cause you score a touchdown here. It's, it's basically the end of the game. Um, but if, I mean, cause it, cause it's, it's really weird when you get down to the lower levels of Indiana high school football, you kind of, and I've always kind of, you know, I've always thought, I've always praised kickers the lower, at the lower you get in Indiana high school football, because it seems like, you know, you just get a kid from the soccer team, he's the kicker, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. You don't really have a kicker. A lot of teams go for two-point conversions. Uh, but even if Heritage Christian can hit a field goal, I mean, Eastern Hancock still is only down a touchdown. This Here's the pitch. Um, it's another great run by the running back down to about the one-yard line, and that should give him a first down. And that may just about do it. So number five for Heritage Christian bails out the offense again. I think that was the last time out for Eastern Hancock. So it doesn't look like he did get the first down there. I thought he did. I thought the first down marker was inside the, uh, like, I thought it was about around the two or three, but it'll be fourth down and one for Heritage Christian. I mean, I think I think you just kind of take a little lesson from the Eagles last year and do a quarterback sneak. That's what I think you ought to do, just see if you can't plunge it in there, even if you don't get it. Eastern Hancock's got a timeout. They've... Um, they would have basically the length of the field to go with a minute 18 to play. And so barring a just broken play, you're going to be in good shape. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to the running back. He plows forward. We've got a penalty marker down. He's short. Oh, sorry. I'm an idiot. It was it, so it was a goal to go situation the whole time. I I, was, I got a little confused when I saw like when when the when the score bug says anything other than fourth and goal, I just get confused sometimes. It is a penalty on Heritage Christian though, so that's pretty big. So Eastern Hancock's gonna get the football back. A minute 13 to play here in the fourth quarter. Eastern Hancock's going to get the football back. They'll have to drive the length of the field essentially to score. So this is essentially what we got at the end of the Westfield and uh, Noblesville game. A team having to drive... Essentially, the the football field to get there, to get to win the game. Looks like Fishers and Hamilton Southeastern is going to overtime. Let's see if we can flip that game on real quick. Or if that one's behind a paywall, it could be. That one is not behind a paywall, it doesn't seem. So that's pretty big.
East Central, winners yet again. So, yeah, we're going to overtime between Hamilton Southeastern and Fishers. So we've got the coin flip going on right now. I need this. I don't know what we're doing right now between Eastern Hancock and, and Heritage Christian. I don't know what's happening. Oh, goodness. You had Eastern Hancock lined up on like the 15-yard line. I was going to say, there had been no plays yet, and yet they were up like 15 yards. All right. Here's the snap. Throw is going to be incomplete for uh, Eastern Hancock right out of the gate. So a quick incompletion to start things off. So it looks like Fishers will get the ball first in overtime. Second down and 10 for Eastern Hancock. Here's the throw. Another short little dump pass. It's going to be about a six-yard gain. Here's the snap handoff to Kobe Martin. He's going to break free, breaks a tackle, breaks another one. He's going to be down to about the two-yard line for Fishers. So they're knocking on the door. The Tigers are here at the start of overtime. There is a flag. Third down and five between Eastern Hancock and Heritage Christian. Let's see what the flag is. Here's the snap. The throw is deep down the field, and it's going to be incomplete. Are they going to throw up? I don't know about that pass interference call. I guess the, um, the corner wasn't looking back at the ball, but it also looked like it might be uncatchable. I think that that part of the pass interference rule is like not even a thing anymore. Because I feel like sometimes balls are uncatchable and they still throw the flag anyway. But maybe I'm just wrong on that. But So it's going to be a pass interference penalty on Heritage Christian. So that should give Eastern Hancock new life. Meanwhile, in the overtime, it was a penalty on Fishers. They'll be back to the 15-yard line. Man in motion. Here's the snap. Quarterback rolls out. Throws it to a receiver. He's down to the 10. He's down to the 5. And it's going to be a first down. Or no, sorry, they're all goal-to-go situations. But a great play on first down for Fishers. Here we go. Second down and four. The snap pitch over to Martin. He's going to break free. He's down to the one. Are they going to give him the touchdown? They will. It looked like Kobe Martin was down at about the one-yard line. But instead, he's into the end zone for the touchdown. And Fishers has the lead. Here's the snap. The throw for Eastern Hancock. It's going to be a first down. So Eastern Hancock driving as we're under a minute to play. Here's the snap. Ball down. Kick is... Is it blocked? It is blocked. But we're going to have a flag. As on first down, here's the snap for Eastern Hancock. Brush is coming, and their quarterback is going to get sacked. A big-time sack for Heritage Christian on the Eastern Hancock. Clock is still moving here. Just under 40 seconds. They're going to get back up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Here's the snap. 
It's going to be a throw from Eastern Hancock. It's going to be tipped and through the hands of Heritage Christian. And so it's going to be a third down, 28 seconds to go, and Eastern Hancock down to their last couple of heaves to try to stay alive here. But what a run by 2-4. Broke through a couple of tacklers as he got the handoff at about the five-yard line. Got stuck. Stopped at the goal line, but gave that extra effort to get in and score to give Fishers the lead. Timeout for Fishers so we can go back to the Eastern Hancock game. Here we go, third down and 10, and we're going to get a false start on Eastern Hancock. So the Royals are kind of down to their last grasps here. Third down and 10. Here's the snap. The throw is going to be caught, but the Eastern Hancock player is tackled immediately. Clock's still running. Not a ton of urgency for Eastern Hancock here. It's fourth and about eight. 13 seconds. Down to 11, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Here's going to be a last second heave. Quarterback just chucks it up into the air. It's going to be tipped and incomplete, and that will do it. Heritage Christian will win this game, and they beat Eastern Hancock 24-20. to Now Fishers is going to go for two. Here's the snap and the handoff and the defense for Heritage. The defense for Hamilton Southeastern makes a big-time stop. So at the end of the Fishers possession in overtime, the Tigers have the 34-28 to lead. As soon as the Fishers running back got got the ball, he was stopped immediate, immediately. As soon as the handoff was made, that play was over. As Hamilton Southeastern made the stop, And it's going to be 34 to 28. First play of overtime for the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff and about a four yard gain. Milan beat Switzerland County 50 to 7. Big win for Milan tonight. Snap, ball is dropped, but it's not going to matter. Is that a touchdown for HSE? I think it is. I think that's a Hamilton Southeastern touchdown. It is. The ball got put on the ground as the play was developing for Hamilton Southeastern. It's picked up by Jalen Alexander, and he runs right into the end zone, reaches the ball over the pylon, and it's a touchdown, and Hamilton Southeastern is going to be an extra point away from winning this game and staying undefeated. We've got a timeout for Fishers. What a play. Crown Point is up 31 to 6 on Lake Central with 1051 to go in the fourth. Crown Point I Crown Point is maybe the best social media team out there because they are on it. They always have videos, they always have score updates. They're amazing. 
I just want to throw that out there. They are incredible. Snap, ball down, extra point is up, it is good, and Hamilton Southeastern has beaten Fishers. Another overtime thriller is in the books. The Royals go on the road into Fishers and knock off the Tigers. A fantastic battle. Between these two teams, number five versus number seven in 6A. What a game. You had the big time Kobe Martin run in the Fishers half of the overtime period. He scores the touchdown. They go for two. The Hamilton Southeastern defense holds strong. Then when the Royals have the football, it looks like it's going to be a broken play. Ball gets put on the turf. Hamilton Southeastern picks it up, reaches the ball over the goal line. That gets the touchdown, and then on the extra point, it's right down the pipes, and it's a victory for Hamilton Southeastern. What a game. We'll get you that Andrean score because we're about to give you all the scores. Last update I've got from Andrean, they lead Munster 21 to 7. Oh man, Fishers Fishers wasted no time ending their broadcast. I guess that makes sense because the Fishers broadcast they just lost. But <laughs> I've seen I've seen broadcasts just kind of drone on and on and on and on and, and that one they're like, yeah, we're we're done. We lost. It's it's okay. Which I mean that might just be the play sometimes. Man. That's three weeks in a row. Three weeks in a row that we have been treated to fantastic overtime games. <laughs> games that have been great and and wound up in the overtime period, and, and it's been awesome. You saw, of course, the overtime thriller between Westfield and Lawrence Central t uh, two weeks ago. You had Monrovia and Linton Stockton last week. Um, and then you had Fishers and Hamilton Southeastern this week. Who do you predict will win 6A this year? Um, I mean, I I went Chalk. I went Center Grove. Um, I just don't see – it's it's it, it, for me, it's gone from picking against Center Grove because someone's got to beat them, the streak has to end eventually, to being like, well – it's Center Grove until it isn't. You know what I mean? Um, it's kind of like how I feel about like the Astros in baseball, or um, you know the Warriors for a while in um, in in the NBA, where you're just like, I, I'm picking teams to beat them every year, and I'm just getting it wrong because I'm I'm honestly just picking. I'm trying to not go chalk, and there's just no reason to not go chalk because Center Grove's just the better team. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I think there definitely are teams out there that can give them a run. Uh, Westfield is, looks really strong this year. Hamilton Southeastern, there's some big wins under their belt. That program is rolling right now. Um, Ben Davis, they hung in against IMG for a bit. I know it got ugly, um, but they're another team that can do some damage. So, um, I, I do think it's going to be Center Grove. Just because I'm, I'm just gonna kind of stop picking against them <laughs> and start picking them to do do some damage. But 
but yeah, um, yeah, an instant, an instant classic. Fisher's Fisher's Tiger football tw- uh, tweeted out classic game as usual. It was. I think that's two instant classics. To, uh, the Westfield game and this one, just how it ended. That was that was insane. So let's go ahead and get some scores here. We're going to go through the top 25 of every class. Uh, let's go reverse order. We normally go uh, 6A to 1A. Let's go 1A to uh, to 6A. So in, um, in 1A, you've got number one, Lutheran beating LaPel 38 to 7. You've got uh, number 23... Hagerstown beating Union County 54 to nothing. You've got number 20 Clinton Prairie beating Tri Central. Clinton Prairie is going to be a pretty uh, tough out. They've been doing some great things. They beat Tri Central 49 to 19. Uh, number 22 Springs Valley beats number 19 West Washington 22 to 19. Um, Southwood, the 16th ranked team in 1A, they beat Northfield 13 to nothing. Heritage Hills puts it on uh, South Spencer. South Spencer, the number 14 team in um, um, in 1A. Uh, Heritage Hills wins 40 to nothing. Number 12, Pioneer beats Caston 35 to 6. Number 24, Riverton, Riverton Park falls to Seeger 35 to 8. Number 10, Milan beats Switzerland County 50 to 7. Number 9, Covenant Christian beats uh, North Putnam 44 to 7. Uh, number six, Sheridan beats Clinton Central fifty-seven to nothing. Number five, Carroll beats Delphi County thirty-nine to nothing. Number three, Providence sixty-six to eight winners over Clarksville. Number two, Adams Central beats Jay County forty-two to seven. And number eleven, South Adams South Adams falls to Heritage thirty-four to fourteen. Going to two A in the top twenty-five now. Uh, I'm skipping over games that either aren't final because they probably are by this point. I'm just going off of max preps. Um, So if I'm not reading your team, they're either not in the top 25 of their class or um, their game isn't final, and I'm pretty sure they probably are final. So I'm just not going to say something that – or they're missing their score. That's also the case. Um, There's a chance some of these are still live, but – I'm just to not speculate because I mean, for instance, it says Frankton is up on Eastbrook seven to nothing in the first. I'm assuming that's way beyond the first. Um, so we had <laughs> number twenty in two A, the top twenty five. Number twenty Fort Wayne Bishop Lures beats Fort Wayne Wayne twenty four to twenty one. Number 19, Rochester, beats Manchester 50 to nothing. Uh, number 15, Southmont, beats Frankfurt 42 to 6. Number 16, Eastern, beats Taylor 46 to nothing. Number 14, Northeastern, beats Cambridge City Link- Lincoln 81 to 6. Um, we saw uh, Heritage Christian beat Eastern Hancock 24 to 20. Uh, number 9, Lafayette Central Catholic, and I just said I wasn't going to read games that didn't have a score, and I just started to. Look at me. <laughs> um. Uh, Cascade, the seventh ranked team in 2A, beats Cloverdale 68 to nothing. Number two, Indianapolis Cena beats Beach Grove 44 to 23. Uh, number three, North Posey beats number 20, uh, number 23, Tell City 35 to nothing. Um, number six, LaVille beats Winnemac 38 to six. And number 17, Paoli beats Perry Central 44 to 22. At 3A, um, the top 25. Ben Davis and IMG was a crazy game. Did that get closer? Because it was like 27 to 7 the last time I saw. I really wanted to uh, tune into that game, but I didn't see any place that was broadcasting it that I could get to at least. 3A in the top 25. Number 8, Vincent's Lincoln beats Evansville Central 56 to 6. Um. Number 10, Hamilton Heights beats Northwestern 42 to nothing. Number 5, Lawrenceburg beats Greensburg 42 to nothing. Uh, number 9, Oak Hill falls to Mississinawa 16 to 9. Uh, number 4, Tri West Hendricks beats Weibo, uh, who's the sixth ranked team in 2A, 26 to 21. 
Um, a lot of missing scores from 3A. That's a bummer. Top 25 in 4A. We've got East Central beating Franklin County. East Central, the number one team in 4A. They beat Franklin County 55 to nothing. Number 22, Columbia City beats Huntington North 55 to 27. Uh, number 20, Mooresville beats number 19, Greenwood 59 to 22. Um, Ron Colley, the seventh ranked team in 4A. They beat Columbus North 38 to 10. Uh, number 21, Northridge, beats number 6, Northwood, 25-21. to 21. That's kind of a shocker there. Um, Northridge, coming on strong. Northridge, they got drubbed in the 4A state final uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, they're they're making their way back a lot sooner than Mount Vernon has, that's for sure. Uh, number 5, Greenfield Central, they continue their dominance. They beat Pendleton Heights, 43-38 uh, to 38 Pendleton Heights, uh, the um, 11th-ranked team. In 4A, number nine, uh, New Palestine beats number ten, Mount Vernon, 63 to 39. Uh, that's all for what we've got final wise in 4A. In 5A, in the top 25, we've got. Number 22, Terre Haute South Vigo beating Terre Haute North Vigo, 34 to nothing. We've got Warsaw uh, beating number 17, Concord, 10 to 3. We've got Carroll falling to Bishop, uh, no, sorry, we've got Carroll uh, beating number 12, Fort Wayne Bishop Dwanger, 40 to 13. We've got Martinsville with a one point victory over number 8, North uh, Decatur Central, sorry, not North Decatur, Decatur Central, 25 to 24. Uh, we've got Franklin County at a one point win over Whiteland. Uh, that's in 15 versus number six. Number 15, Franklin County beats number six, Whiteland, 22 to 21. Um, we've got number 10, Mississinawa. Mississinawa. Number 10, Mishawaka winning 48 to 13 over Goshen. And, and Penn beating number 25, Han Mor Hammond Morton, 35 to nothing. Of course, Penn is ranked in 6A. And finally, top 25 scores in 6A. I'm from Warsaw. Hate their organization transferred to Tippy and balled out. Hey, good for you. Congratulations. Uh, uh, Tipton has a special place in my heart. That's where my grandpa went. So glad to see. Uh, glad to see that you're uh, you're enjoying things. So an update on Center Grove now leads Archbishop Moeller in overtime. That's a live score right now. So another overtime thriller. So many overtime thrillers this year. It's been the year of overtime, I feel like, unless I just missed a bunch of overtime stuff last year because I feel like a lot of games are going to overtime. All right, top 25 in 6A. Number 23, Pike beats Southport 46-14. to uh, number 18, Warren Central beats number 15, Lawrence Central, 25-16. to 16. Uh, Number 16, Zionsville beats number 12, Franklin Central, 24-10. to 10. Um, Number 9, Lawrence North beats North Central, 49-14. to 14. Um, Of course, we saw number 8, Westfield beat number 14, Noblesville, 28-21. to 21. We also saw number 5, Hamilton Southeastern beat number 7, Fishers, 35-34 to 34 in overtime. IMG Academy beats Ben Davis, 34 to to 14 number uh two brownsburg beats number 19 avon 53 to 30 um like I said number 13 penn beats ham and morton 35 to nothing uh number 10 carol beating fort wayne bishop dwinger 40 to 13 and trinity all over number 11 carmel 41 to 14 so another exciting night more awesome games from around the state of indiana um, thank you guys all for hanging out tonight. 1.6K likes. Thank you guys all for showing love to the live stream. Thank you guys all for hanging out with me tonight, talking some football, talking some Indiana high school football, You know, going all across the state tonight, looking at some great games. Uh, so thank you guys all for hanging out. That's where we're going to wrap it up tonight. Um, if you missed any of tonight's broadcast, any of tonight's reaction, um, East Central did win big uh, tonight. Uh, they're They're just in cruise control right now. Um, if you missed any of tonight's broadcast, um, it will be posted on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening. 
Um, so make sure you check that out. Um, if you if you did miss anything or you want to relive another amazing night of Indiana high school football, that will be out on Sunday. Um, if uh, you're wanting wanting some recap of the Indianapolis Colts first game, uh, that's what we're going to be center centering. Can't talk. That's what we're going to be centering the podcast around this week. The Crash Course podcast that will be going out on Wednesday. Uh, so make sure you guys are locked in. Three uh, C Media Sports on Twitter. Three C Media on Facebook. Three C Media over on the YouTube channel. Uh, if you're uh, so, if you haven't seen our Colts preview yet, uh, make sure you check that out. That's live over on the channel. We have a preview as well as a schedule uh, breakdown. Um, so make sure you go check that out. Um. And not a, not a standalone video this week. We didn't have a podcast this week, so uh, not as much content as I'm used to plugging uh, at the end of these broadcasts. But um, yeah, we'll be we'll be live. We'll be uh, releasing that podcast again on Wednesday, um, so that'll be good. We'll be reacting to the Colts' first game, um, and yeah. So if you're on YouTube. Go check out the TikTok. That's where we have these live streams every week. If you're on TikTok, go check out the YouTube. A lot of great content over there if you want to go uh, check that out. Remember, you can listen to the Crash Course Podcast every week on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, wherever podcasts can be heard. You can hear the Crash Course Podcast. That wraps up another exciting night of Indiana High School football. Thank you guys all for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys all next week.